Welcome to my channel, Not Delusion. My name is Nicole. On this channel, we focus on all things narcissism. The topic of this video is 12 signs I ignored when dating a narcissist. When dating a narcissist, you may have noticed certain things someone does that seem a bit off. If you stay to the end of this video, I include a red flag, something that I discovered well after the relationship ended. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe to my channel to get notifications of when I post another video. So let's get to it. 12 signs I ignored when I was dating a narcissist. Number one, when we worked together, I had a small bottle on my desk. It was a sample of a new item from the company that we both work for, and he just um, took it. Um, it was a small item, um, so he just picked it up and walked away with it. And um, I was with him. I mean, I, I saw him do it, and I didn't say anything. I mean, I probably should have said something like, um, could you put that back or, you know, let me have that or, get, or give that to me. But I didn't say anything. It was worth a couple of dollars at the most. Um, but still, I think very early on, he let me know what kind of person he was. And I chose to ignore it. Number two. The second time we went out, like I hardly even knew him. I wouldn't even like call it a date. Um, we saw another coworker that he was close to that I didn't know very well at all. And he introduced me as his wife. So that was the first and only time that he's ever, you know, done that. And it was very inappropriate because we hardly knew each other. We weren't even holding hands or anything. So that was kind of bizarre. I think this was the period when the narcissist was, you know, idealizing me and love bombing. Um, but no one takes that seriously. I mean, like we don't even know each other. So, you know, I didn't really pay any attention to him. Number three. We were out and about uh, having a pretty nice time. I remember I was wearing a, uh, a dress and um, not super dressed up, but it was during the daytime. And he uh, asked me if I could sing. So that's just kind of off the wall, right? I mean, you're on a date and why would you ask somebody if they could sing? I mean, I could do a lot of things. But singing is not one of my areas. So I don't think I even answered him. Number four. And I think this was the very first argument that we had. He did not want me to go out with my coworker that was a late coworker. And he didn't want me to go out with her. I mean, he just kicked up a fuss and, you know, became very... Um, disturbed. I had never seen him like that before and it was completely uh, unreasonable and I should have seen that as a sign of things to come because that was just him getting started. But um, I think I did go out with my friend and uh, I saw him later on afterward and he came by my car and uh, we were talking through the window and he just looked very uh, disturbed. I mean, he just completely, you know, was like off his wig. You know, he's just completely wigged out. And um, that was something that I took a note of. I think I had silently said to myself that, you know, if that if the relationship doesn't get better, like I was going to put a time limit on it. And if I kept seeing things like that, that um, it was going to 
going to end. But I knew that I had to put a, a limit on this. Number five. He wanted to get married when the relationship was really new. Like we hardly knew each other. You know, we were together all the time and he always wanted to go to Vegas. And we would walk by those chapels and things. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's not anything that's going to happen. Like, you know, on a whim. So, of course, we never, <laughs> we never got married in uh, Las Vegas. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a red flag if they want to marry you without really even knowing anything, right? The relationship doesn't have enough roots. There's no traction. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say that wasn't a good sign, right? So number six, um, we both had uh, worked together on acquiring a new customer when we worked together at this company. And um, the customer, I don't know what she said to him, but he went to his manager. We were working under different managers. He went to his manager and told his manager about the customer. And we ended up losing the customer to the manager. So it made me really, really upset. And um, we still got past this as well. He did something without talking to me about it. It affected us both, but he just took it on his own to go talk to another person. And, you know, they didn't have anything to do with this customer. Number seven. When I was cleaning up, I found uh, he had tucked uh, under his clothes, you know, he tucked under it a letter from the company that we worked for. And um, apparently he cheated a customer that did a return and they terminated him. So I had no idea. He never mentioned it. I never knew that that was going on. I didn't recognize the name of the customer. I didn't have any idea who she was. And um, he never mentioned that the company terminated him. So I guess he got away with something. Yeah, I guess he got away with it. Number eight, I mentioned the Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie video that my ex-narcissist was arrested. I included a link in the description below for my take on Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie. This video includes what happened to me when my ex-narcissist got arrested after we were arguing at a restaurant. So at this time, the cop had told me, um, he just said he's a narcissist. So he was just, you know, looking at me and I think he was waiting for it to land. But at that time, I didn't really know what a narcissist meant. I was just thinking, yeah, he's vain and like he could be a real jerk. But other than that, I wasn't real sure what he was trying to tell me. But I think that he was trying to tell me that this person doesn't care about you. He only cares about himself. I think that's what the cop was trying to say. Number nine. He had a friend uh, that lived not super nearby, but in the same state that he never introduced me to. So he sometimes would talk to this friend on the phone and they would, you know, sometimes send each other postcards and things like that. But he never introduced me to him. And I found out later that he got in touch with this friend. And uh, yeah, I mean, because after we broke up, he went flying back home to his mommy, right? So um, then later on, apparently, he made his way back to the same state that we were, that we were in. He. Uh, contacted this friend and stayed with him until he met his current partner. 
he just had set up this kind of like a railroad system, right? That that was why he never introduced me to this friend of his. Number 10. Um, we had seen a uh, one of those, you know, for fun questionnaires. It was like a how freaky are you quiz. And we both, um, you know, answered the questions and we just shared our scores afterward. But his score was a lot higher than mine. I think mine was like 25 or something like that. And his was like 67. It was just a lot um, higher than mine, which surprised me. I remember saying that his score was so high and he just kind of um, gave me his smile. He didn't say anything. Um, number 11. A co-worker had lent him a car and he got all kinds of tickets on it. He was traveling at the time and I wasn't there. So this co-worker lent him uh, his car and apparently he was driving all over the place and got a ton of tickets on it. So I didn't know until one day this guy, you know, was at the door and demanding money. I didn't see him, you know, I didn't go up to the front door. Later on, this guy's brother calls me and says that I'm responsible for all the tickets because he, he couldn't register his car. And um, I got out of it. You know, I said, I wasn't even here. You know, I don't have anything to do with it. I don't know what happened to it, but he was always doing things that I didn't know about. Number 12. When we went to some nice places together, later on, he only wanted to go there alone. Like he didn't want me to go there with him. I think he had found like spots where he could continue on the money train. And um, yeah, I mean, at that time, I don't think I really cared anymore. You know, it's just kind of, it gets old, right? All this arguing and it just really gets tiresome. Number 13, the bonus number 13. And this is uh, more than a sign, it's a red flag. But I didn't know until we split up. After the relationship ended, I went through the things that we had in storage and I saw a copy of his federal tax return and um, he had a child that I didn't know about. So he never mentioned it. I had no idea. Like he's the last person to be responsible for anything, right? So that was a surprise to me. And um, I don't think his current partner knows anything about it. But he has a grown child walking around that he never took care of. So anyway, thank you for listening. If you relate to these stories, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.